<clears throat> Hello. Um, this time I would like to share with you uh, uh, two rather simple um, charts. One, one is a diagram, one is a, a picture, a picture of a tree, the tree of theology uh, that comes from Latin America. That's where I come from uh, myself. And um, the other is the, um, the design of practical theology as a discipline. And I want to do this as a way of um, helping us uh, think uh, and, uh, of how to go about uh, doing the, uh, the final essays. And um, in light of the topics that you have chosen, but also it will illustrate the, the heart of the matter in practical theology as a discipline. A discipline that is uh, a theology in its own right, that is grounded in, in actual life of people, the, the reality, that's why we call it empirically grounded. Uh, a discipline that is hermeneutical because it's about interpretation life of people in light of the tradition and uh, the resources of science uh, and also <clears throat> a, a discipline that is uh, ethically uh, uh, equipped uh, to, to judge, to evaluate practices, what are better um, uh, or worse practices for example, um, care given, and actually we have been uh, dealing with that already from the beginning. Now we're putting some names in this. And finally, a discipline that has uh, also a very practical interest in, in application, right? Um, but uh, let me start with um, with the the tree of theology. I have here the the diagram, the tree of theology, is simply a way of depicting um, uh, how we think uh, theologically and articulate our reflection on faith, shall we say, um, in, in three main, uh, on three main levels. The, the level of the uh, grassroots, we could call this the reflective wisdom of the believers, um, uh, the roots. Notice, notice that it's one tree. That's what I like about this this diagram. <clears throat> it's one tree. Uh, the gra grassroots being the actual life of the people, the laity, we might say. And then we have the academic uh, professional uh, on top, the the branches and the fruits. Um, the textbooks, for example, that you read, that we read in most disciplines, um, generally speaking, are written on that level, the research and the uh, documentation, etc., etc. But here in the middle, we have what is called the mid-level theologizing, um, and also called <clears throat> pastoral theologizing in the sense of uh, precisely of middle le level um, ways of thinking and talking about faith and, and ministry. Um, so what um, uh, I'm inviting you to do for the final papers basically is to work on this level as much as possible that is the level of pastoral theologizing. And you will draw from experience of um, people in your congregations or wherever, you, uh, depending on your topic. And you will hopefully also um, consider uh, pertinent uh, bibliography and will have other ways of uh, going about um, exploring the topic and um, I hope you will have fun with this actually. So um, this is one way to talk uh, very simply 
about uh, the level of um, language and um, and uh, the kind of scope in a sense also of your work there. Now, to together with this, and you may have already noticed in our syllabus, there is a reference to the four uh, tasks and dimensions of practical theology. Practical theology understood as a discipline, as a theological discipline in its own right. That is the discipline that reflects critically and constructively on the life and ministry of the church in the world with particular attention to processes of formation and transformation. It's not just ecclesiology, in other words, but there is a, um, a particular interest in um, formation and transformation that, of course, that's the stuff of discipling, as in teaching, preaching, etc., this ministry, but also caregiving um, in, in all its forms. So practical theology as that discipline that is concerned with a, a, a critical and constructive reflection on the praxis of Christians in the world uh, with particular attention to processes of formation and transformation. From a Christian perspective, we say in the light of um, Jesus Christ and the reign of God. Now, uh, the book that best describes the tasks of practical theology <clears throat> um, is this. Practical Theology and Introduction, uh, written by Richard R. Osmer. Practical Theology and Introduction. This was published uh, in 2008 by Ehrmans. And um, it's a very, very helpful book. Of course, I'm not going to ask you to read more than uh, what you're reading now, but you may want to keep in mind uh, perhaps to have in your library eventually. Uh, I, I strongly recommend it. Um, Richard Osmer has a very helpful picture of the four tasks and dimensions of practical theology that precisely are the kinds of steps, you may call it, but not steps as in a ladder, rather steps as in a dance, if you will, or like in a spiral. And here it is, the, the four um, tasks of practical theological interpretation, he calls it, because he rightly, uh, Osmer, that is, sees uh, practical theology as a, not exclusively, but primarily a discipline that has to do with how to uh, read, uh, uh, interpret human life in light of how we read reality, the tradition, that is, the Bible, the teachings of the church, etc. And of course, uh, with the resources of culture and sciences such as psychology and uh, education and, and all pertinent human uh, sciences. So here you have the four uh, tasks. As I said, they are mentioned in um, in passing in the, in the syllabus. Empirical descriptive, what is going on? Uh, what is going on as I study um, miscarriage, as I study marital breakdown, I study suicide, whatever the case may be, um, what do I observe? Um, what do people tell me, tell us? What is written out there? Hmm? Then uh, interpret, interpretation in the narrower sense, analysis, why? The question of why. Why is that going on? Uh, for example, why is grief so painful and tends to be long, a protracted process? Uh, why the guilt uh, in mis 
courage whenever that happens, whatever the case may be. And um, ideally for us, it's not just a question of bringing the human sciences invaluable as they are, indispensable as they are, but we also need to bring biblical, theological, ethical criteria. And we have already been done some of that um, in this course. Uh, third, the question of the normative, I mean, the, the, the evaluation. What are good practices? Uh, for example, what do we mean by a good death or a good dying process? And what do we mean by um, and what is involved in good accompaniment in times of grief and uh, painful longing, whatever the case may be, see? Um, so again, uh, we have psychological norms and other um, human science norms and theological ethical norms. And finally, the pragmatic. That is to say, uh, we might say the, and now what question? Uh, what principle, what guidelines for further practice? How does that function in reality? So I thought that, um, see, combining what we have indicated in, in the syllabus, the, uh, the pastoral caregiver as a reflective practitioner, and pastoral theologian, understanding and doing pastoral and practical theology. Um, this is what I'm trying to uh, communicate in, in this opportunity and uh, as a way of summarizing what is involved here and also the expectation. You are not expected to become uh, an expert in the sense of this <laughs> level, I, I, I assume you're capable, but you probably need more time than what we have, um, and maybe some other resources to develop. But at least you can work on this level, becoming acquainted with the topic at hand, and also in such a way that uh, your analysis is meaningful and that you find uh, orientation for your own practice. That is my hope and um, I'm already excited uh, knowing the kinds of topics that uh, uh, as far as I can tell already you have the, the group. Um, very, very pertinent and I look forward to uh, collaborating with you as you complete. So, blessings to you. You are uh, reflective practitioners and um, practical pastoral theologians for the grace of, uh, for the glory of God and for the blessing of many, including yourselves.